Hey girls, welcome back to another video. My name is Jenny Penton, founder of Planet Perfect. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about ways that women um, make mistakes when setting goals, and especially in their monthly planners. Okay, so they are devoted, these goals that are in these planners are devoted to execute within the month. And so it's game on. And so I'm going to share with you some mistakes that I noticed that it will help you um, really get some momentum and some success in on, with your monthly goals. Okay. So this is my July book. It was in the subscription book box of ours. I will put a link up at the top. If you're interested in our planning and journaling subscription boxes, we have several to choose from. This is an A5 complete heaven. I love this space. It's absolutely phenomenal. So what I want to go and share with you is just dive right in and tell you several different ways that women make some mistakes. Okay, so the first one is that they're not setting any personal goals. So then within the goal structuring here, they're more setting more household cleaning, nothing challenging whatsoever for themselves. And that's kind of what I want to um, make sure that's the that's mistake number one. You're, this is the perfect place to write down how you can be more organized, how you can be um you know, get a wrangle on the home, set routines. This, that is the place to do it. It's awesome. Um, but, and, and really for you to have a routine in here should only be like maybe in the beginning of like, let's say spring or the beginning of summer. So make sure that you are setting goals that are personal, that you, whether it's spiritual something that is challenging you. And it also would be pretty cool if you did something very new, something that made you nervous, something that was just like, ah, I'm just not used to doing this. Something that shook you up just a little bit. Okay. So you're going to want to challenge yourself every month, or you're just going to really stay stagnant. So really take note of that when you're really going to set goals, you're going to set some home goals because those definitely matter on staying because you're CEO of the home. But what also definitely matters are your personal goals. So make sure that you write those down. I'm going to show you some of mine to give you some inspiration. Number two, um, you know, setting too many goals. I mean, and they're set too high. So maybe you're one that is overly ambitious and you you're just really writing out all these things that you're going to do because you're kind of maybe an ex to-do lister thinking you really just want to do all of these different things and you've got a scroll of things and you're just kind of writing it that way out. More like a big long goal to-do list, a, a bucket list of sorts or something. That's not going to be, um, that's not going to work really. That's not going to work at all. And you will not do them all and you will feel um, the pull and the stress of having to do it that you when you do something like that that's kind of like I've seen some women where it's just there's no detail then it's you've really kind of kept it out as a separate entity from you rather than interwoven into the fabric of your everyday life and that's where the motivation comes in is when you've You've really thought out the why you're doing it, what you're doing, what's the purpose behind it and the intention behind it. And when you have all that squared way and then, you know, you'll be good to go, which leads me into the next one. When you go to set your, your, your goals, this goes with your life, with your planning, your scripting and your goals, especially. You need to be 100% convicted. And I'm telling you this from a spiritual standpoint and from also just a mental standpoint. You must be completely persuaded before you write these goals down or you're wasting your time. Spiritually, God wants us to not be on the fence about anything. That's why the word is so important because you need to know what the word is and you need to read it often and enough that it becomes integrated as part of you. So then when that happens, you don't are never gray or black or white or wondering if, if God will pull through or if this or that, 
you will know because it's part of you because it's been interwoven into you. You believe wholeheartedly, 100% that God's word is true. On a mental platform, when you're doing anything here, out right here in the, in the physical realm, when you're here, if you are at all gray, it's not going to work. You want to be 100%. You want to be 100% on this, on whatever goal you are to set. Like, you know what? If you even think for a second, like, I'm going to be exercising and I'm going to start. But you know what? If if something like, I, I don't know if I really enjoy running, um, but I'm going to begin running. Um, I hope this works. And, um, you know, because I, I mean, I just need a little bit of exercise. I think it'll be good for me. That's not good. You need to have done your research on why you're running, what are the benefits, and if it's even for you. It's one of those things that you can't just go and wing those kind of areas of your life of goals and be gray because you will fall even before you start. And if anything came up, you'd be the first to call out and say, you know, yeah, I'm, you know what, I'm not going to go today. Or I'm not going to do it today because I think it's hurting my knees. I mean, so you're just kind of, you're gray. So when you go to set your goals, you're 100% in. You're all in. You're completely all in and you are not gray. And I know that for me, when it went to parenting, when it came to my business, when it came to my health, if I was not like if here's a good example of health. If I didn't really if I wasn't really convinced that, let's say, white flour was bad for me, if I wasn't fully convinced, but I started a new diet and it got tough then I'm going to go back and fall into my default and have some toast and live in temporary bliss and then say, ah, oh, crap. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'd have to be knowing and have done my research and educated myself on why I'm going to do it. And that is what is so, that's why details matter. Because when you write details, you are convincing yourself not to be gray. You are convincing yourself that this is the way you're going to do it and you believe it is true and you're going to do it. And you are, that's, that's the, that's the whole psychological approach. The more you're writing this out, I mean, you've got your whole mind completely convinced this is what you're wanting because of all the detail you've laid out, you're eager, you know, the day, you know, the time you're going to be doing this, you're convinced you've written it, you've already done some research. So you've really, you are, you are going to persevere through this do or die. And so that's a, just a perfect example of how you, if you aren't absolute, if you aren't a hundred percent certain, you will fail. You will fail at it. And so with the method, with the goals, you need to be a hundred percent. And this is how God wants us to be anyway. He wants us to focus on him and he needs to make sure, and he wants you to believe only on him. And he wants you to have faith and believe in his word without physical evidence of it yet he wants you to believe and unless we do we're not going to be seeing any kind of um manifestation of of our prayer life and actually get to see it physically until we believe which is going to take some faith so this works across the board so when you set goals girls you set it with 100% certainty or don't do it at all. Next one, that you aren't trying anything new. Now that kind of kind of piggybacks on the first one where you're not really setting any personal goals. But even when it comes to your, your, your household or anything else, you know, you could be, this could be very broad or you could tighten it up. But you're going to want to try something new. What is a new skill you could learn? There are so many cool apps out there like Masterclass, Skillshare. There's really cool things on there. I mean, you could learn pottery. You could learn something new, something that would even that you already tend to be kind of good at. And you could go in and, and learn more about your skill that you already have and begin to exercise it and use it. And this ties into everything I've always talked about. And that is to use your talents. And now this is a great way to say, hey, you know, what? I think I like this. I think that I am good at this naturally. I'm going to learn more about it and take a class on something. You can just do it in the privacy of your own home. It's pretty awesome. Um, 
I mean, the, the sky's the limit, girls, on what you could pursue in. Honestly, the sky is the limit. What are your interests in and how could you pursue it? So you're going to want to make sure that each month you are trying something new. And then, of course, are you detailed enough? This is the final one. Are you detailed enough? Because the secret sauce is in the details. And I told you why a little bit earlier. And that is because of the psychological reasoning of writing what you want and how you want things to go in full detail will not only give you creative flow in how you're going to do it, why you're doing it, and the excitement around it, which gives you that feeling of just, this is mine, I'm eager, and I'm going to do this. Like you can even see yourself in, in what you want. You can see it happening. And it gives you that intrinsic motivation as though you, you don't have to try. It'll be very much easier when you are detailed because you are writing with intention, conviction, belief, and faith all in one. And that's what this method does for you. I, and I, and I, if you just, I, honestly, with every video that I do, it may have like the same, you know, kind of things that are, you've heard before, but guaranteed with every video, you will hear a new spin on the method because there is just a million ways to share it. And so each day, sometimes I just get new ways to express why this method works. And so I want you to really understand the importance of detail. For women that are, I don't care what season you're in, you should be able to truly get a creative flow and start to um, really live a life that you love that's full of purpose and intention. So that's the idea. And you take off of from the ideas that are birthed in your goal pages, and then you write them in more full detail on the day that you're going to execute it. So let me give you some examples in my planner. And my goals, now we had some extra pages in here that could have been used for like the last stragglers of June and stuff, but I used them for other other. Um, reasons. I'm going to show you that in here. So my first goals, this is the 4th of July. So this is an idea. I'm going to kind of give you some insight on how to set some goals for, let's say, a party for a holiday, and then how you would, you know, execute it. So for here, you know, a menu, the guests, there's 24 people I had. Um, when the party starts, all the details of the food, the people, all of this was all that I needed for um, what I needed to do. And then as I was going into, and you can actually even like, I was unsure of this cake that was in here, the flag cake. I was unsure how that was going to, that magic was going to happen because I was so booked. And that weekend I was able to really know what it was. And so when you get over to then your day that you know you're going to execute some of these things, I had my daughter making the cake. One of my daughters, I had another, I had a son getting me some, picking up some food. I had um, another daughter folding my laundry, folding all the family's laundry. And so it was just when you, but you know what everything, who's coming, what you need to get, you can delegate and you can start writing then those details as you draw closer to the, the party day. So on Saturday, maybe you're doing this. And then on Sunday, you're executing something else. And then on Monday is the day is, and that's when you are, you know, really laying out those plans. So make sure that you really fully get a brain dump of everything you know you have to do for that holiday. And then you can get more detailed when needed when you get closer to the day to execute it, okay? So now I ended up using this for my routines um, because it's just going to be... Um, it's a summer edition and I'm going to see how it fully works. It's a little bit different. My, I get um, different adult children that need me sometimes. And so those are things that um, I just adjust and adapt. And it, I've always just found that you really can't get stuck to just one way of doing things because life happens. That's why my AM routine 
And plus, I have a new puppy, and um, she really is a force to be reckoned with, so I, I do have a new baby, and um, I am more devoted than ever to make sure that I do the proper training on her so that she can be cared for and our family can adore her the way she deserves to be loved. So um, I'm up at six. Now, the frustrating part about this for me was I didn't even get my eyes open yet. And, you know, I'm playing fetch. I, it's not what I wanted my life to be, okay? But I felt like I could organize it in a way and make sure she's really crate trained so that she doesn't have to get out immediately and that I can take her out, love her, take her potty, and even bring her back in the crate until I'm done and I'm ready. And after I've had my coffee and some devotions, and then I can play with her fully devoted without any kind of bitterness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that goes for my children. I mean, I'm putting everybody in their place that allows me to be able to serve them in the best possible way. And so when that's the case, I have to be first. Um, and so that's, she's, I've crate trained her all day today. And um, it went from crying for two hours to the next time I trained her, making it cozy, putting treats in there, really kind of getting her accustomed to it. And um, now she just went in by herself. And then she just went a couple little barks and I said no and nothing and then I did it one more time and she went in absolutely nothing came out of her so I feel like I am already setting myself up for complete success so that I can make sure that I can do the things that I do and incorporate others and serve others and puppies with my 100% loving self. You never want to do anything that makes you bitter in the background. It's better just to either say no, don't even get the puppy, don't, you know what I mean? It's better just to say no to something than then to do something half-heartedly. And so that's always been my philosophy. And I, I felt it. I remember these hard times in the morning and then my husband's dragging out of bed and, and you know, it, it's, it's hard. And we were like, you know what? I, I just have been watching so many videos and I was like, you know what? I need to really train her so that I can set myself up to love her in the best way and that I can at least open up my eyes. <laughs> okay. So that's just part of the, what I loved brain dumping out is how I was going to change that up. And then I've got my work that I do. Um, I do some work and then I have chores and then shower. And then this is when I start feeding my kids kitchen cleanup and, um, this is also, I have sketch and paint. Um, and so this is a variable because it might have to be swapped down to the PM, but at least I have it down. So I have it as a daily. I do have variables here on when I do have my grandsons. And I also have variables with my working out, which is sometimes in the AM, sometimes in the PM. So I just wanted that to be over there just so I know because it's an intention and it's something I took totally am all in about. Um, eating, and this is for my children. I put them on a schedule and they can eat outside of it, my older ones, if they want to, but I'm not going to feed them and they've got to clean it all up. So, I mean, I'm not going to make my 15 year old, you know, if he's not hungry yet for some odd reason, which is usually not the case, um, then he can feed himself and clean it up entirely and wash any pan he used. So this will kind of give him an incentive to kind of stay within my schedule so that my kitchen really does stay clean and tidy. So we've got nine, noon, and five. And then my PM routine, this is the game on for me. Um, and that's clean up after dinner and then sweep and wash floor. This is where children are helping me. Laundry done and put away. Family rooms, spotless, skincare routine, journal plan. Touch up on some sketching because then the next day, the night before when I sketch, then the next day I'll watercolor it. So that's kind of what I do. Um, let's see. Oh, and make sure my coffee's out and have everything ready and the Molly's leash out, blah, blah, blah. And then to bed by 10 always. And again, a variable, one of the days in the PM I work out. So then I've got my health um, protocol and I wrote that in here and I, it's so perfect because I should have this pretty much memorized. I have to do this protocol actually for six months. So I have through December. So my new year should be like awesome. So I'm working with a functional medicine doctor and um, he's got me on how much protein I need per day, leafy greens per day, veggies per day, complex carbs, booster foods, liquids. I have to do bone broth 
every day, one to three cups. And this um, warrior bread, this is like a almond flour bread that is an option. Fish three times a week. And so I had to write down my schedule on how to operate that. Like what, how am I eating? You know, so I had to set myself up. So this is a fish day, a fish day, a fish day, blah, blah, blah. And then this is how, oh gosh, it's been something. My supplements are intense. So according to all of my deficiencies, then he's setting me up with these supplements. So I have all of these written down what times of day and with food or without food and separated and divided and yowza. So I got all that down and I love it because it's brain dumped out. I don't have to look at my computer screen anymore. And I'm hoping that by the end of the July, this will probably be just be old hat and I'll just totally have this within me and I'll know what to do. Um, my birthday, my son has a birthday coming up, um, Blaine, so he'll be nine. And this is what I've got so far. And we're still tweaking it because he's a little uncertain about certain things. So this is where I put it. And as I draw closer, I would, um, you know, be doing it. Here's the week at a glance. I just didn't use it. So I had my Saturday and my, and my Sunday here, but let me just share with you. This is the extra pages because of the way the month hit that we could use. Um, and I used them for extra goal pages. So what I did is I've got my health in depth. So I'm kind of using this to journal throughout the month of July, how the supplements were, should I change it up? Did the meat, the bone broth, did that work? Do I need to change that up? I added, you know, it's like today I added broccoli with it. I had a fast day with uh, bone broth. So I added broccoli and how did that go? All that kind of stuff. Daily routines. Um, so now it's not AM, PM, but more daily. Each day has something different in it that I do. And so I really wanted to nail that for July. So I'm going to be sitting down on the couch and finishing this up, but it's ready for me. My exercise routine, my sister and I work out together. We do strength training. And so we do it on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I'm really going to write down the routines myself She's got the thing that we follow, but I'm going to make sure that I write it down myself. And then also I was going to be writing down on my off days on what I'd like to do on those off days, which is probably going to be 10 K steps or get on the treadmill. So I was going to be writing that down. So in here, I even was trying to dream and just not trying, but I was dreaming about what I could even fulfill and use this page for. So I will be using that. So, um, yeah, that is how I have my goals set. These are the tr tips, tricks, and just some hacks, life hacks, quite honestly, about how to set goals and set yourself up to succeed. So, um, girls, I hope that this has inspired you in your goal planning and that it sets you up to succeed in all that you put your hands to. Until next time, girls.